Welcome to my multi-page floating tables in Writer talk. Um, in this call, uh, in this talk, uh, we will cover a new Writer feature, uh, which is a combination of multi-page tables, which was already available in Writer, uh, combined with floating tables, which was already available in Writer. So the combination of floating objects or floating frames, floating iframes containing a single, exactly a single table. Um, if you don't know me, um, I'm around the LibreOffice and Collabora online community for a while. Uh, I used to work on Writer for a while now. Um, and uh, this year I mostly worked on this feature. Uh, so here is a screenshot showing you what we try to achieve here. Uh, what you see is a two-page document. Um, it has a single floating table, uh, but the floating table has a large enough height that it does not fit page one. So it has to also flow to page two. Uh, so it's sp uh, spanning over two pages. And uh, you can see that it's very hard to, uh, to get this uh, set up uh, with uh, two separately uh, created, explicitly uh, created frames and just chaining them because um, the number of uh, tables created will depend on the content inside the frames. So they are created on demand. And you can see that this is just not just a simple uh, multi-page table. Also, there is some anchor text and that's uh, uh, wrapping around the table on the last page by the last page only uh, because we want to be compatible with the matching word feature and that has this default behavior but you can also see that um, uh, the um, inside the table uh, the row is possible to split uh, also the various text frames like paragraphs inside a single cell frame are okay to split and we can have also multiple columns. So uh, this is meant to be a, a true combination of multi-page tables and uh, floating tables, or like tables inside uh, floating frames. Uh, so that uh, looks simple, <laughs> but uh, the complexity uh, com uh, also comes from how this feature is interacting with the various other features or the existing in writer. We want to provide some consistent experience. Uh, so what um, you will see now is a um, selection of uh, features where we uh, floating multi-page floating tables are interacting with those things and um, how we try to make uh, something consistent. Uh, so the first thing is uh, you can click on these frames and you get, can get selection handles. But um, really just the first page position is uh, controlled by the user. The later frames are calculated by the layout. For the horizontal position we will copy um, the, um, the positioning attributes. For the vertical position we will just continue from the top of the page. This means that it does not make sense um, to allow the user uh, to uh, click on a follow frame, like a second frame. Uh, we want uh, uh, the user to uh, click on the master frame, the frame on the first page, and then it uh, makes sense to, to drag the frame around. Uh, otherwise, uh, it would look like you can drag the frame around, but once you release the frame, it will again jump up to the top of the page, and that would be annoying. Uh, so now we have explicit code in place to make sure that whenever you try to drag such a multi-page table, we always drag the first uh, page frame. Um, the second sample where we are interacting with something uh, already existing is uh, floating tables inside footers. Uh, these are, by definition, have, have to be one page because the footer is repeating on each and every page. So you won't get more space by uh, splitting the table and moving it to the next page. Um, because you can only have a subset of a one page area for the footer. Uh, so 
know we uh, know the layout logic knows this and it will explicitly try to not split when the anchor position is inside the footer <coughs> then another um, interesting area is um, uh, when we in, um, position the anchor it can be either directly inside the body text that was uh, visible in the like the very first sample but it can be also inside the section and in case it's inside the section then when we uh, create a new page and we want to split the anchor so that there is an anchor point on the first page and the second page then we want to make sure that the second page also has some split section frame and only then inside that we have our second anchor frame so that needed explicit um, uh, pairing um, the floating frame uh, feature with the um, with the section one then another uh, corner case is what happens in case the table has some page break before um, in case the table moves inside some fly frame then we typically ignore this request because it does not make sense to have a fly frame uh, containing a page break now in this case we need to move that a page break to the anchor point and make sure that as we duplicate the anchor point to have an anchor on the first page and the second page only the first page has this page break before uh, behavior so this again needed explicit uh, fixes then it's an interesting question what happens in case you have a multi-column section it turns out that um, we don't uh, want to um, have the table flow across multiple columns because this gives us a compatible word behavior and also it's a very rare combination and it would be a lot of work to make sure that this works because like um, equally distributing content across multiple columns is, is quite complex so increasing that complexity with with these uh, multi-page floating tables would um, just uh, cause um, a lot of trouble um, then uh, we want to have some UI for this uh, you can right click on a um, frame and get this frame properties dialog and now there is a new checkbox, checkbox there uh, if the frame is allowed to split across pages or not and now uh, allowing this so going from the disabled to enable state was something I added quite early so that was perhaps the easier part but we also want the other way around in case it's already split then you want to be able the master fly to join the follow fly so that's now possible and it's working uh, we have the necessary um, fly frame format to fly frame uh, notification in place so that this works as it's intended now another related feature is this explicit pairing uh, between um, two fly frames in the document model uh, we have this feature that if you explicitly create these frames then you can chain them and uh, uh, this uh, does not make sense in case the first frame is um, allowed to split because then it's not clear what happens when you have type enough content that it does not fit the page anymore should it flow to the next frame next explicitly created frame in the chain or should it split so we don't allow this chaining on the UI to avoid trouble the users now have a harder time to create this confusing document model and this means that either you chain your frames but then we don't split or you split but then you don't chain <coughs> another um, kind of hidden feature is that um, you can have a per document setting uh, where uh, you say that you don't want to split these frames in any case you might have a uh, multiple uh, floating tables perhaps um, splitting is um, allowed for one table but not for the other and uh, still uh, with one setting you want to disable the split for everything uh, this is again important for older documents uh, because um, in the for example in the original RTA format this was not allowed uh, so now we have um, two levels 
Uh, one is a per document setting, which is disabling this display data layout level, and also we have this per frame setting. The per keeping the per frame setting is still useful in case uh, the per frame uh, setting says that it's okay to split and um, the fly frame contains a single table. Then on export to word formats, we can map this to a floating table. Uh, otherwise, we will just create a shape and that will contain that, that table, but then it won't span over multiple pages. Then another case is um, when you have a section break in word formats between two tables. Uh, we need to uh, like decide how to we map this to writer. Sometimes we map it to a writer section. Sometimes it's a page break. In this case, it's um, it's uh, the the type of the section break is next page, so we map it to a next page uh, section break. And um, in this case, we may we need to make sure that um, uh, by default you will just get the two tables and there is no no text node in between that would have um, the the page break before attribute so we need to arrange things uh, suitably that there is one anchor on the on the first page uh, there is one anchor on the second page and still uh, we can have a model where the first page has no page break before but the second page has uh, then uh, there is um, trouble with nasty tables. Uh, now this is not fully solved, but there is um, one case which is the easier part, and that's already working. Uh, the case is that you have uh, some multi-page floating table in the outer case, and the inner case is um, is a floating table, but there we don't allow splitting between multiple pages and that uh, allows rendering a document um, similar to the one on the screenshot properly uh, because um, in this case it's important that it's a floating table even for the inner one in case it would be an in inline table then it would require more space and possibly that image on the inside the outdoor table would shift to the next page and it would lead to incorrect layout uh, then another complexity is the negative vertical offsets for these floating tables. Um, the offsets um, determine um, what will be the position of the table. Uh, so you have some, some starting position, which is the top left uh, corner of the paragraph that's serving as an anchor point. And then you typically have some positive vertical and positive horizontal offset there. Now let's uh, ignore the horizontal part, so let's say that it's zero. You can have a vertical offset. In case the vertical offset is positive, then it will shift the table down. And in, in case then it's negative, then it will shift the table up. Now the question is what happens in case we have two pages, uh, we have these three tables, and the third table has an anchor on the, third, uh, on the second page and it has a negative offset. So one option is that it's shifted up and it will intersect with the header area of the page. Another option is that we say that there is space on the previous page, so perhaps we can have the table there. And it's a conflict, uh, you need to solve it in one, some way and whatever is the decision, somebody will be unhappy. Uh, so the decision I took is that it turns out that Word has an answer for this. It always uh, shifts the table to the previous page. So in the Word Compat mode, uh, we, we do the same so that we provide the matching layout. Uh, so this is a bit confusing. You have a table, then you have some text after the table. That paragraph will serve as an anchor for the first table. You do the same for the second table and its anchor, but then there is another paragraph after the second table and then there is the anchor for the third table and this this uh, this um, uh, third table is positioned in a way so that in the layout the third table appears first then comes some content which is like uh, uh, before the third table in the document model and the nominal anchor point is already on the the next page. So that's quite complicated and now we 
provide a layout which is um, yeah, matching the expectations with existing board format documents. Uh, then another complexity was um, what happens in case the anchor text is uh, starting with some content uh, which nominally does not have um, any width, like a new line character. Uh, the trouble there is that um, when you start your paragraph with a new line character, then you will have two lines. The first line with what will have some height but no width and the second line will actually have some content. Now the trouble is that you can, the layout can easily figure out that you have some line which, is, which has zero width, which means that it's okay to move it up uh, to some previous page. But then later we, we figure out that um, we want to wrap this content only on the last page, so, so we will move the new line down to the second page and then move up again, move it down again, and it's a layout link. So this needed explicit uh, checking that um, that even in case the very first um, uh, part of the anchor text would fit some previous pages, then we don't um, don't um, uh, move that content up, and uh, this way we have a stable layout result. Another complexity is what happens in case you anchor your floating table inside paragraph and that paragraph would be hidden. In that case, in Burn, uh, the, the table is still visible, just the, the paragraph that's serving as an anchor point, like the next paragraph, is uh, hidden. In our case, in case we hide the paragraph, then all the objects which are anchored inside that paragraphs are also hidden. So what you see here is three sc screenshots uh, the one on the, on the left is some old behavior. You can see that it has some image and some text content. The center one is the new behavior in Writer, but you see there is some image and then there is some uh, table uh, followed by that. It's basically used to create some two column layout. And on the right, uh, you see the word result, which is more or less matching uh, our new behavior. Uh, so what we do is that in case, this is something that we handle at import time, in case the anchor would be hidden, but it's hosting some um, floating tables, then we ignore the hidden request for that anchor paragraph so that you don't, it doesn't look like it would, your, your content would be lost. Um, then another setting is um, there is some, some um, setting on each and every floating table in case overlap with other tables is allowed or not. Uh, in our case, we map the floating tables to a text frame which has exactly one table. So we already had these settings for shapes uh, to control if overlap is allowed or not, but that was not hooked up with um, uh, split frames um, layout mechanism. So what you see on the left is how if the document requested that no overlap happens, uh, but we ignore that and just by like reading the positioning attributes, we had um, an overlap on the left side that was the old writer behavior. The center one is the new writer behavior. We figure out that um, once the table one is positioned, then table two has to be shifted down, otherwise an overlap would happen. And on the right side, you see um, what Word is doing the new writer one and the verb behavior is now matching. Then another problem uh, was what happens with table borders. Uh, what we had before is we have some table, we split it to two, we move the second part to the next page, which means that the bottom of the first page and the top of the second page will have incorrect table borders. Uh, now what we can do is that we can infer that in case it has a top border, then it has to be a, a ma uh, has to have a matching bottom border on the first page. And similarly on the second page, it, in case it has a bottom border, then we can infer that it has to have a top border on the second page. So again, on the left side, you see the old writer behavior. On the center, you see the new writer behavior. And on the right hand side, you can see that this is no matching one. In all these cases, I try to do this carefully so that um, you 
uh, only get the new in case it would be a, like an incompatible change then you, we keep the old behavior for existing ODF documents but we do the new behavior for uh, for word documents and when the behavior looks like it makes sense then let's have it also for a new document then another complexity is what happens with footnotes inside tables footnotes inside tables is okay but you can't have footnotes inside fly frame which means that in case we put the table to a fly frame so that it's a floating table we lose the footnotes the previous answer for this was that okay in case it has footnotes we won't convert it to a, a floating frame but then uh, the fo floating table will have incorrect layout left hand side is showing some document which has a footnote and also some text below the table. Um, the right hand side is the word one. You can see that the footnote is there, but because the table is floating, um, the next uh, space where the normal inline uh, paragraph text can appear is at the top of the table. And now in the center, you can see the new writer behavior. We know support uh, footnotes inside floating tables which gives you the both the footnote and the um, that text at the right uh, position uh, marked with the red rectangles so now you might uh, wonder how this is implemented so let's go through how this is um, uh, working from the source code point of view um, what um, we do and the document model level is that we have this fly frame format which is hosting the attributes for the for the um, the floating frame and that has uh, this uh, container for the properties the item set and uh, there is no a new uh, pool item subclass there which is det determining if the fly frame is okay to split or not and there is a matching key constant uh, which allows you to look this up <coughs> then at the Uno API, there is no a new uh, property called is split allowed on the text frame. If this is true, then it, 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 it contains exactly one table, then that's a floating uh, frame, a floating table. Now the layout is uh, quite exciting, that's where all the complexity is. And uh, so the, the design started basically what Michal suggested like six years ago. <laughs> Uh, why not extend fly frames so that um, it they are also flow frames uh, which already know this logic how to span over multiple pages and well it's easier to say that than do that but that's more or less what I did so what you see in the screenshot is um, we have these text frames uh, which are anchored at paragraph at the anchor point uh, then the frame height is also is always automatic so that it, it will uh, span over multiple pages as the content needs it uh, then uh, we always have an anchor point and um, the, we also have a point which is the top left of the position frame um, then uh, on the last page we do this wrapping so that the text frames uh, which are the anchors always have some um, some um, offset which means that in case uh, which basically is the character position inside the paragraph uh, that is the starting point on that page so in all pages this is zero which means that on the last page we start from the, the start of the anchor text and we flow that around the, the floating table and um, as mentioned one complexity is that even in case um, the user configures the first page in a way that the floating uh, table is shifted down we only consider this on the first page on in later pages we always start on the top of the page um, another problem is that um, even word itself has different behaviors uh, the, for older versions and today in older versions it's okay to overlap the, um, the floating table with the footer area and the newer version it's it's a bit more same this is not allowed we support both cases uh, to have correct rendering for all of these documents um, then uh, for filters um, in the ODT case it's a new optional attribute on the draw frame element 
to decide if this frame is okay to break across pages or not. Uh, in the docx case, there was um, um, an explicit markup for these positioned tables or table positioning properties, and doc and RTF had um, again something similar. Um, also, this uh, document model, um, model do per document, uh, don't split tables in any case setting needed explicit support in the filters, and also the frame level don't overlap setting needed explicit support. So all this uh, feature is created. Uh, so far it looks um, nice and works uh, in some sensible way. We want to have testing so that um, uh, it stays uh, this way. Uh, I have some tests which load Word documents and we assert the layout uh, so that you can manually also open it in Word and you can compare that we do a, a correct job. Uh, we also sometimes build document models from C++ code and assert what the layout does. We do some um, UI testing for the UI dialogs. Uh, I'm also monitoring uh, crash testing, watching the, the um, uh, Tinder boxes in case they find any problems. And um, like the, for example, the Tinder box that's building uh, the code with sanitizers is very helpful to point out memory problems. Uh, this is how the UI looked like. It's really just one checkbox there, so the UI part is, is easy. Um, it's far from true where to, how to, um, far from trivia to decide how to represent this in Odia. There was a discussion about that on the developer mailing list, and the conclusion is that um, uh, similar to the Z order of these frames, we will have an attribute there. Uh, to decide if it's okay to split or not. Uh, for the no overlapping per shape uh, or per frame setting, there is already a markup for shapes, we can reuse that. And the per document setting to completely disable this splitting behavior is going to the settings XML similar to the other compatibility settings. So that's not part of the spec. Uh, we can just add new values there. Um, so this is where we are. Uh, this um, feature was uh, requested like 10 years ago. I'm very happy that um, funding now was available to actually create this feature. Uh, it's, uh, its first uh, part is shipping in LibreOffice um, 7.6, also in Collabora Online. Uh, that was the main motivation on our side, uh, but it's really um, at the core of writers. So the, Intention is that everyone is benefit, both desktop labor office and Collabora online users. Um, it feels like more than half of the work is done, but there are missing bits, like um, full support for nesting these floating tables is one thing. And there are many, many cases like how this interacts with change tracking, the various compatibility modes, uh, minimaro, height, and so on and so on. Um, I, I still have a list of uh, what's more things to chat. Uh, how, how this new feature is interacting with the existing one to provide some, some consistent experience. Um, and by default, we do what today's word does uh, for the splitting behavior, but also we, we care about uh, other documents, uh, which should hopefully give, you, uh, give users um, um, an experience, which is what they expect. Um, thanks for watching, that was it. And uh, thanks for the ones who, who funded this feature so that we could, um, we could add it to LibreOffice. Thanks for watching. Bye.